Hello, my name is Barbara Coleman and I'm the Communications Lead for the Alliance. Genomics enables midwifery professionals to predict and prepare for situations in pregnancy to better protect and care for the parent and child. As genomics is now included in the Nursing and Midwifery Council standards of proficiency for midwives, and with rapid advances being made in the field all the time, it is important that you can talk confidently about it and understand its relevance before, during and after pregnancy. Genomics is impacting clinical practice, how midwifery services are structured, but also providing opportunities for midwives to influence the process of change. In this episode of Genomic Matters, we hear from my colleague Wahida Abbas, midwifery lead for the Northwest Genomic Medicine Service Alliance, as we discuss the impact of genomic testing within maternity care and the genomic touch points, which will help you to identify where genomics can have influence during each stage of the pregnancy journey, which in turn support good practice. Hello, and thank you Wahida for joining me today. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, hello, my name is Wahid Rabbas and I am the midwifery lead for the Northwest GMSA. Additionally, I'm also clinically practicing midwife as a cultural liaison midwife at Bolton NHS Trust. That's great. Thank you again. Um, can you share with our listeners your experience of genomics and how uh, you apply that within your clinical practice? Genomics already plays a role in clinical practice for all midwives and other midwifery professionals to a greater or a lesser extent. Colleagues are already applying genomics, but they don't necessarily bridge the knowledge with the clinical practice that they're carrying out. So over the last 20 years, the impact that genomics can and does make for expectant parents has increased tenfold. Referrals from midwives to myself in my genetic liaison midwife capacity have increased from two to three a year to two to three a month. We hold a valuable trusted relationship with our expectant parents who need midwives to be knowledgeable, confident and competent in relation to genetics and genomics knowledge and skills um, to be equipped with, with that knowledge. But sometimes you can feel isolated. Patients and families really do inform our role as the midwifery re, uh, lead for the Alliance, but also as a midwifery professional, so across all specialisms. So this includes midwives, midwife sonographers, specialist midwives, which includes screening midwives, um, and it links with the care we provide. So this starts from the onset of booking appointments, and ideally the booking appointment needs to be m much more than just a box ticking exercise as this provides a framework for the pregnancy and neonatal journey. So would you say that the the booking appointment really is that sort of first opportunity to to apply genomics to the care of the expectant mother and unborn child? We are ideally placed to discuss genomics with those we care for or provide care to uh, and the available testing, diagnosis, and management and treatments for parents and their babies, allowing them to make that informed choice. In your experience and, and opinion then, how, how valuable is taking a family history? So especially when taking the family history, that that is a key. It helps to understand the genetic history, or what genetic conditions run in each family, um, and if there's any previously identified conditions from last pregnancy which are could be relevant to the current pregnancy and also sometimes it, the expected parent might highlight um, that you know previously that nobody cared about my pregnancy and nobody took note of the family history so it's always uh, worthwhile taking a deep dive at the family history especially if the previous genomics consultation was a number of years ago and a referral to clinical genetics or screening may be appropriate on this occasion. When should a referral to clinical genetics or screening be made? So referrals for genomic counselling or testing should be made at the earliest possible opportunity especially when you're booking and if you encourage early booking um, because the earlier they're, they're referred to the genomic services, the earlier they'll have the, the tests and the test results can provide information that can have a considerable impact on, on their care 
uh, and their personalised care. So some genomic tests can take several weeks to come back. So it's really important um, that, you know, we speed up the referral process. So that's why it's really important to think genomics. So whenever you ask about personal obstetric and family history. I was going to say, do, do you feel that there is a greater or growing awareness of genomics amongst your colleagues as well as, you know, the expectant parents? It's growing very slow in terms with regards to midwifery colleagues, but I would say to all midwives and health professionals to find out more because genomics has always been here and it's here and it's now and in the future. And sometimes it can fa- sound really daunting, but you don't necessarily need a master's to learn about genomics and um, the information and support is it is out there. Uh, midwife, midwifery professionals need to be supported to become confident and be equipped with that knowledge so they feel comfortable and knowledgeable and ha- and are empowered to discuss gem- genomics with their, you know, the families we see um, as necessary and also ensuring that they have time to consider their options and support to make that informed choice, which is really crucial. So do you have a top tip or a first step that you'd recommend to, to midwifery colleagues? Uh, midwives, you know, you need to get to know what is available in your area regionally and find out where you can access specialist genetic um, and genomics advice. We should be all prepared as much as possible for any questions that may arise. Um, and ideally, we need to be equipped to find the right answer. Advice and support are out there by, uh, online by the JEP website and by the GMSA website. And it clearly shows how genomic impacts midwifery professionals viral. Also, um, the RCM has a website which talks about genomics. So the genomics, the genomic considerations don't start when the baby is born. So the midwife might notice the signs and symptoms. So when the baby's first born, they might notice that the baby's got a genetic condition, it may be visible. Or when they carry out the NIP, um they might notice that there's something that, that's not right and might indicate a referral to special services. Or it could be that the expectant parents has a genetic condition themselves. Um, so that means that they are a higher risk during pregnancy and have a higher chance of the fetus um, having, a con- having that same condition. Similarly, you may deliver a baby who was diagnosed with a genetic condition during pregnancy or it's been identified as having a higher chance of having a certain condition based on the screening tests or due to a family history. What impact of, of a diagnosis or the identification of a possible genetic condition does that have on, on the family? Understandably, the family may find this a really challenging time depending upon a number of factors. But again, the midwifery professional should review their case, support the family and adjust their personalised care plan accordingly as required. This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and obviously I'm aware that you have a a passion about this topic, obviously with regard to breast cancer during pregnancy. Yes, I'm really passionate about this. So breast cancer is the most common cancer in females as we know and it has a lifetime risk of one in nine, and in pregnancy, it's one in every 3,000 pregnancies in the UK. And it's also a leading cause of death in women who are aged from 35 to 54 years. So breast cancer, it affects 5,000 women of reproductive age in the UK annually. And in some cases, there is an inherited genetic risk of developing this type of cancer. So during pregnancy, there are quite a lot of breast changes, such as increased size and breast tenderness. And this might make it difficult to detect lumps or anything different um, as early as possible. So expectant mothers should should feel able to flag any changes when they have noticed to their midwives. So it's really crucial that the midwives encourage the pregnant person to feel breast, you know, and if there's any changes, to report them to the midwives for further investigation. So ideally, there may not be any cause or concern, but expectant parents should be assured that cancer treatment can be given during pregnancy as appropriate in line with the results of any tests that are carried out. So to end this episode, um, 
can I ask you what what you feel the future of genomics within midwifery practice will be? Yeah. So as part of the NHS Accelerating Genomic Medicine in the NHS structure, this covers a five-year period from October 2022. So the regional alliance will continue to support the embedding of genomics into routine healthcare, which includes midwives. Um, it also includes key research initiatives to inform future decisions in relation to commissioning of services. And this includes a whole genome sequencing pilot for the newborns. This project, the newborn project, it's called Design the Genomic Singling to explore the benefits, challenges and practicalities of sequencing babies, a genome, a sequencing baby and genome to speed up diagnosis and access to treatment for any rare conditions, rare genetic conditions. So midwifery professional will be the key to the identification of participants to this initiative and more information will be available in the coming months. That's fantastic. Thank you ever so much for your time, Waida, today. Um, as I say um, to, to everybody listening, please do visit our website for the very latest newsletters by area of clinical practice, as well as our back catalogue of Genomics Matters podcasts. So thanks very much again.